Hey you guys, Matt Allen here. Welcome back to Tactical Bass. And today we're talking summer jig fishing. I've got four tricks for you that will help you catch more jig fish this summer. Jig fishing is one of my all time favorite techniques. Uh, if you've been with us for any length of time, I'm sure you've been down a rabbit hole with me about jigs already. I get fanatical about it. There are so many different kinds of jigs, different trailers. I mean, I can stack the boxes up and we can go deep down a rabbit hole. But today we're taking a look at four very specific things. I've got four jigs and four trailers for four very different situations that will either help you get more bites or help you catch bigger fish. Uh, now, anytime we're talking jigs, I, I open with the pitching jig. And that is my, if I could only have one, it would be a pitching jig with a sweet beaver trailer, half ounce pitching jig. I put it on a braillist and I go. Now, today that's not what we're focused on. Uh, but I did want to grab the Braille specifically. You guys know, if you've been around at all, that this is my favorite jig rod of all time. The Mega Bass Orochi Braille. Uh, they have been incredibly hard to get in recent years. Last year, there were some available. This year, there are a ton. They have been in stock for months, which is amazing. So if you're one of those guys that was waiting on a Braillist and forgot about it or didn't look lately, you can get an Orochi Braillist. You can also get one step down. You can get the lower level Braillist as well. I'll link the Braillist for you in the video description. Uh, but that is just my bread and butter. You know, half ounce pitching jig on a Braillist and just go anywhere in the country. That said, Today is about a whole different ball game. Today is about some things you can do that are different. Things that will make you stand out from the crowd, things that will get you bit. Let's start out tiny and let's end big, okay? So first up, when we're talking jigs in the summer, it's all about getting quality bites. A jig just gets a better bite overall. It'll, it'll catch a big fish, it'll catch a small fish. But overall, if you logged your catches, the jig just generally catches a better fish than other techniques. So that stands to reason that even in a finesse situation, crystal clear water, highland reservoir, where those fish really want finesse baits, guys are drop shot and Nico rigging, Taking the time to switch and throw a jig will still get you a consistently bigger bite. We've talked a lot this summer about fishing the color line in those clearer water fisheries where bass back out in the middle of summer. It's hot, it's miserable. Bass back out to the color line because that offers a very unique shade that people overlook. You've got shade right here under these trees. You got shade on docks. People are fishing that. Out on a color line on the edge of a point, people are driving right past it, never even thinking twice. Those fish are lined up on that color line. Again, we've got other videos about that. But in a clear water finesse fishery, this summer, try, this is a Kitek tungsten football, half ounce. So it's a heavy head with a micro hook, micro little hook with a half ounce head. Little Kitek football, and then paired up with the Z-Man Cross, the TRD Cross. That little package right there can get eaten by a little smallmouth, a little spotted bass, a monster largemouth, a monster smallie, it doesn't matter. It's small enough that any fish can eat it, but it's got that jig profile. That skirt opens up, it flares, and a jig, as we know, just gets a good quality bite. If you focus time on this, focus on that color line, spend some time throwing the jig instead of the worm, and you will be surprised when you catch a great big fish in the middle of summer. Don't be afraid to downsize relative to the other jigs. Up from a worm. Now, I throw that on a very specific rod. If you're looking for a rod to throw it, jigs are the one category where I constantly 
talk rods. Most categories I say, you know, you could use this or you could use that, but this is the one category where you're talking about a lot of weight with a single jig hook and it takes the right rod to keep those fish pinned. I specifically throw my little finesse footballs, the little guys, on a 610 medium heavy. That's what I throw it on. 70 size reel, uh, and you can throw it on straight fluoro or you can throw it on braid to leader. I usually throw it on braid to leader, but a 610 medium heavy with a downsized reel is the deal for, for being able to send them. One, that smaller 70 size reel will just send that bait and then it's a half ounce with a tiny hook. That's a hard combination to keep in their mouth. When they come up jumping, that's difficult. That 610 medium heavy has been the best rod I've found for keeping them pegged. Next one, the pitching jig. I beat that dead horse so many times. This is a compact pitching jig. If you throw a pitching jig already, if you throw a football head already, if you like throwing a jig in the summer, the compact pitching jig is exactly what it sounds like. It's a shorter shanked, smaller hook all the way around. It's a smaller profile. I pair that up with a pack of chunk, okay? That's the standard size pack of chunk. It's not the senior and it's not the tiny. Standard size pack of chunk in that compact pitching jig allows me to fish my exact same standard summer routine outside rock rock piles rocky corners outside breaks docks deep docks where they transition my standard jig routine but i can do it on lighter tackle and i can get more bites so if you've got cleaner water than normal this summer or you just seem to be struggling to get that jig bite a compact pitching jig will let me go because I typically throw a pitching jig on 15 to 20 pound line. I can throw a compact on 10, 12, 14, 15 pound line. So I can downsize my line. I can go to a lighter rod to make up for that. And I can be really effective. It's still a full profile jig. It's got great kick, great action, great colors. Uh, but I'm able to get away with lighter line and still get a really strong hook set on those fish. And it's got a great hook in it. It's a shorter shank hook, but it's a great heavy wire, strong hook for its size heavy wire, not compared to a giant gaff, obviously. We'll get to that. But for its size, it's a stout hook. You can pin them on that lighter line and get those fish in the boat, even the big ones. Uh, that will get you more bites this summer. From there, this is a no jack flipping jig. Now you can flip heavy cover with it. We'll circle back to that. That's not why I'm talking about it today. This is the three quarter ounce specifically. What I wanna talk to you about right now is stroking a jig. It's a technique more than the jig, but I use this three quarter ounce jig with a freaking giant hook in it. The no jack hook is no joke. That is a very powerful hook. You literally cannot bend it out. And then I've got a four inch pack of slim on there. That combination of heavy jig and strong, kicking, aggressive trailer is perfect for stroking a jig. Now I rigged one up here. I've got this on a seven, seven heavy and I completely skipped over the rod for that compact pitching jig is an 844 MBR. My all time favorite rod for throwing that guy. And then also this real Concept C2. The Concept, so when I go to these lighter rods, I like to balance them out really well, okay? This is a G Loomis GLX, it's a lightweight rod. Not as light as an NRX Plus, but just one step back from there. The GLX is awesome. The 844 MBR is a very unique rod because it's an insanely, look at this tip section. Hopefully you can see that on the deck. Incredibly soft tip section, but then it still meets a very stout 
backbone. So it's a rod that I can take that smaller jig and I could just, I could feel everything. When they eat it though, I feel the load up and then I could smash that hook set. Now, if you're not on a budget, I would put an Aldebaran or a Metanium on here, but I'll tell you what, for the guy who drops the extra money on the rod, because for jig fishing, put the money in the rod, okay? You want the right rod for the job. Put the money in the rod. If you've got the money left over for a high, high-end reel, by all means do that too. But this Concept C2 is one ounce heavier than that the Aldebaran that I use for all my finesse techniques, okay? One ounce heavier, still significantly lighter than all my other full-size reels. This reel is extremely light and it's half the price, roughly half the price of an Aldebaran or a Metanium. So if you're worried about it, put the money in the rod and that Concept C2 is a killer reel that's really light. It balances really well. It has a great drag in it and it just works. So just a killer combo. And then circling back, when I'm stroking the jig, this is a 7.7 Heavy. It's the X-Pride 7.7 Heavy. I've got a Metanium on it. But the important thing is just that it's a long, stout rod. Hold on, I've wrapped this jig around here. Let me get that unwrapped. Well, I wrapped it every which way you could. All right. So oftentimes when you're fishing a jig, you're just sort of, just sort of pulling them along the bottom, right? Some guys just plain, just drag. That's all they do, just slow pull. When I work most jigs, my standard jig routine is a double hop. That's what I do with it, just a, just a bump bump. I've watched a lot of crawdads and underwater footage and when they go to scoot away, they pop up off the bottom and then they scoot. It's a two-stepped motion. So I don't just do these single hops of a jig and I don't just shake a jig. I use a little double hop. That's how I work my jig. So just hop, hop, wind up that extra. Hop, hop, wind up that extra. That's my standard jig technique. Stroking a jig, however, is a whole different ball game. It is about slamming that jig. I still use, I wanna put it way out there because I'm actually in shallow water right here. So it's, I'm gonna show you the technique, but normally it would be in a different environment. Let that jig hit the bottom. I still use that double hop, but it's completely exaggerated. Now I know you can't see the entire rod right here, but you'll get the idea. I wind up that extra and then I full on double pump it. Now it can be as hard as a hook set like that. Let it hit bottom. That's the extreme end of stroking the jig. A lot of the times I go about halfway between normal and a hook set. So about here, pop, pop, wind up the extra, pop, pop, wind up the extra. It's extremely aggressive. The jig is on the bottom. It takes off and then jumps. And I mean, I might be moving it six, eight, ten feet feet on every hop. Middle of summer, fish's metabolisms are high. They are aggressive. They are not afraid to chase. Stroking a jig draws an incredible reaction response. It does not work every day, but on the days that it works, it's out of this world. It works way better than everything else. And it's one of those techniques that just gets really, really big bites. So don't be afraid to try this. Now again, the key is a three quarter ounce head at least and a trailer that will kick in the water. So it takes off and then it swims back down. Takes off swims back down because when it takes off, they take off after it. But when it peaks and then starts coming down and it's swimming, that gives them time to smash it. So most of my bites, when I do that double hop, 
I'm right here and it goes dong. And I mean, they hit it hard. So you have to be paying attention because you're already kind of in the back seat. You're already up here and now you've got to, you got to give it a little more. But I'm telling you, it will be some of the biggest jig bites you ever get. Will a small one eat it? Yes. But it is specifically targeting above average fish. And then last but not least, you can take that same jig and flip heavy cover. We've talked about clear water. We've talked about going super finessey. Now I wanna talk about heavy cover. A lot of people punch and flip with a Texas rig, me included. I love to flip with three quarters of an ounce up to two ounces of tungsten on a big EWG style hook. Some guys like a big flipping hook, flipping heavy cover or punching through heavy cover. It works great. The only downside of that technique is that when you hook them, you've got a big fish through heavy cover on a worm hook with a whole bunch of tungsten out in front just thrashing. You lose a lot of them. So the last thing I wanna talk about is punching with a jig. Now, up to three quarters of an ounce, that no jack jig is perfect, no jack flipping jig. But if I need to go heavier than that, I switch over to a punching head. That goes all the way up to an ounce and a quarter. Same exact hook in both of them. Kicking trailers in both of them. Pack a slim or a rage craw. Big, full profile jigs. But here's the key, you see how thick this weed guard is? When I hook a big one through the mat on a Texas rig, there's no weed guard to help hold it in place. They're thrashing, and if I don't get them out, I'm gonna lose them. If I can get them to eat the jig, they compress the weed guard, they get hooked. The weed guard is putting back pressure. It's actually pushing and keeping the jig in place your hookup to land ratio is way higher, way, way higher. So the downside of punching with a jig, let me cover this. The downside is that because you've got to get the weed guard and the skirt through, through the heavy cover, it tends to take a little more weight. So if I was able to flip with a half ounce on a Texas rig, go to a three quarter ounce in a jig, if I needed three quarters of an ounce to an ounce, you need to go all the way to that ounce and a quarter. Okay, so it takes a little more weight to get through the same hole. That's the only downside. After that, it's all positives. If you can get them to eat the jig flipping, use a jig. Only switch to the Texas rig when you have to because your hookup ratio, your hookup to land ratio is that much higher. Guys, I hope this helps you. I know that it will. If you take the time and you do these things, it will help you catch more fish. Uh, again, this is a technique where the right gear makes all the difference. Stroking that jig, I'm using that 7.7 Heavy. I could flip with that too until I go to heavy cover flipping. Then I go to that X-Pride 7.11 Extra Heavy, which I believe is the best flipping stick ever made at any price. You know, it's half the price of some flipping sticks, but that is, that's the rod that I use. I believe that at any price, that's my best option for getting those fish out of heavy cover. Uh, but again, with any jig technique, the right rod is key. So I'll link these baits. I'll link these trailers. I'll give you my favorite colors for each one. And then I'll give you the specific rod and reel combos that I use for them. Guys, again, I hope this helps you. If you enjoyed it, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and we'll talk to you soon.